Welcome to the Nighthawk 200 Let's Build. In this video, we'll be soldering this racing quad together from parts, going over the configuration, and test flying. Let's take a quick look at the parts we'll be using. We have the Nighthawk 200 frame with MT2204 motors and 20 amp Nano ESCs, featuring the Skyline flight controller and power distribution board from Emacs. We'll be using the ET200 video transmitter and mini CC camera. And for the tools, we'll be using a soldering iron, rosin core solder, some flux, a hex driver, wire strippers, and a hobby knife. Please see the description for a full list of parts and tools used in this video. Now, let's build! Every build starts somewhere, and that somewhere is the frame. We'll use the supplied hardware to attach the main six standoffs to the base plate before moving on to the ESCs. You can use the time index in the video description to easily skip around to different parts of the build process. Cool, so while we start going through the motions of putting our frame together, we will go over kind of how this video is shot. This is over three hours of condensed build footage. Uh, this shot sped up over 600%, so you see everything in hyperspeed. Uh, hopefully this is not too disorienting, and if you need to, you can pause the video at any point in time to get a better look. Now that we have the base of our frame together, we can move on to prepping the ESVs. We'll be cutting down the heat shrink, exposing just the motor solder points. We'll be able to desolder the ESC wires and solder our motor wires directly. This is the recommended method for soldering ESCs to motors. Now, it takes a little bit more time, but it has the least amount of failure points, and it's the easiest to work with on this tight build. This process takes a little bit of work. You don't always do this kind of prep on your ESCs. Sometimes you'll completely take off the heat shrink, and then you'll apply a new heat shrink, which is recommended. But for this build, we're just going to expose the tip of our ESC leads for us to easily solder and desolder them. You could be using different ESCs than I am, but still, it's going to be the same process. I'm being very careful to cut away no more than I need to. I don't want the underside of the ESC to come in contact with the carbon fiber when we put it on it. If that happens, bad things will happen. Electrical fire type things. Very, very bad things. Now that we have our ESCs exposed, we can desolder the wires to allow us to solder our motors directly to them. With the soldering iron, apply heat to each wire and pull. This process should only take a few moments and maybe a minute per ESC. Cool, so now that we have our ESCs desoldered, we can prep them to be soldered. To do this, we're going to use our rosin core solder and tin our ESCs. Tinning our ESCs ahead of time makes it easier to solder our motor wires to them. All of this added prep really does pay off in the long run by making the motor signal wires easier to solder onto our ESCs. You might be able to get away without doing this, but I highly recommend it. So now that we have our ESCs desoldered and tinned, we can finally start prepping them for our frame. So what we're going to do is attach them with a few zip ties. This process is pretty simple and straightforward, and it's actually fairly quick. Really cool thing about this frame is there's a little notch on each arm for the zip tie, so once you get it on there, it's not going to move back and forth on the arm. Some people will just use electrical tape all the way around the arm. You can also use something called wrap strap to attach your ESCs to the arm. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, but this frame is specifically set up for zip ties. Okay, so now that we're done prepping our ESCs, we can start with our motors. Now, on this build, it's really tight, so what we're going to have to do is cut the heat shrink down on the motors to expose more of the wire, so when we go to shorten the motor wires, we have more play. Now, this is a very important step, and on your build, it may be different because you might have different ESCs. Um, on this build, we have the 20 amp nanos, and they are a little bit big for this particular frame, 
but it does fit, so just keep that in mind when you're building. Cool, so now that we have our motors uh, exposed and the heat shrink cut down, we can move on to cutting down the motor wires. And for this, we're just going to take one of our motors and put it on the frame and measure out, just kind of guesstimate how much length we're going to need. Now, it's always good to leave a little bit of slack here, so when you go to solder things together, if you need to switch out a motor wire, you can desolder it and move it over to the other ESC lead. Um, so yeah, as you see here, we go through the one motor, and as we figure out the length we need to cut it at, we can then take that one motor, double check the length, and replicate it over to our other three motors. And this saves a lot of time without having to attach our motors to the frame and doing them all individually. The next step is going to be uh, exposing the tips of our wires and then finally moving on to tinning them. Whew, okay, so that's a lot of work so far. And what we need to do now is tin our motor leads. Now you may ask, why go through all this work to just solder our motors and ESCs together? Simple reason is, is that it makes it way easier to solder everything together at the last moment. And your solder joints are gonna be way better doing it this way. Having your ESCs pre-tinned and your motor wires pre-tinned means when you go to solder them together, all you're going to have to do is apply your soldering iron and the two points together and they'll melt together. And you'll be left with, in general, a very clean solder joint. Cool, so now we can attach our motors to the frame now that we have them all tinned and ready to go. Uh, to do this, we're just going to use the supplied hardware that came with our MT2204 cooling series motors. And these particular motors came with two sets of hardware, uh, one for 3 mil frames and another for 4 mil and 5 mil frames. And before we get too deep into this process, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. What we have to realize is the motor direction, and these motors have uh, defined direction, so there's clockwise and counterclockwise motors, and on these motors you can actually see the motor direction which way they go. On most other motors it doesn't really matter because you can just change the signal lead and they use regular nylon lock nuts, but on these ones there is a definitive motor direction, so just be very sure of that when you're going to put that on your frame. Now, with these motors, it's very easy to tell because it does have the directions on the motor. So, which way do you want them spinning? Well, the way I remembered it is just have all of your motors spinning inwards. So on the NAS32 board, and this is different for Open Pilot and CCD, 3D, and um, NASA, they all do their motor directions differently and which motors are which. So this is only pertaining to the NAS32. What you can do is just imagine the motors are spinning inwards. So if you're looking at the back of the frame, the motors are spinning inwards towards the frame. If you're looking at the front of this frame, they're spinning inwards towards the center of the frame. Cool, so now that we have that part done, we can move on to soldering our motors to our ESCs. And this is really where all the prep pays off because all we have to do is take our trusty soldering iron and apply heat to the wires and the ESC leads, and our motor wire should just melt onto our ESCs. And it really is as simple as that. But again, if you don't do this process of pre-tinning and adding uh, solder to all of your ESCs and cutting down, the other way of doing it is just cutting the ESC wires mid-length and then cutting your motor wires mid-length and then using some heat shrink soldering your wires there without desoldering the wires from the ESCs. Some people do that because it's quick. I know I've done it in past builds, but 
Direct soldering to your ESCs is really the best way of doing it. This means you have the least amount of resistance in your motor wires, so you have the most amount of power getting to your motors. And um, yeah, so just, just make sure you pick the method that works best for you. There really is, in my opinion, no wrong way of doing it. Whatever way gets the <laughs> power to the motors is the right way of doing it. Um, you can also use bullet connectors. Uh, I know on a couple of my other builds I've used bullet connectors in the past and people say that adds points of failure, but to my flying, I've never had that be a problem. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind when you're figuring out how you want to solder your ESCs to, you know, pick a method that works best for you. But for this build and for me, direct soldering is the way to go. And again, we're leaving the ESC wires exposed because it looks cool. <laughs> so now we can move on to our power distribution board. Uh, this is what's going to route all the power from our ESCs to our battery and out to our video transmitter and camera. The Skyline 32 flight controller that we're using comes with these standoffs, but we're going to throw them out. <laughs> and we're gonna use some of our own. Uh, these ones are listed in the description, so if you wanna use them, you can help yourself. With the power distribution board and the Skyline 32 flight controller on this frame, it's really tight. Tight to the point that I was not able to use my Naze 32 flight controller that I intended to. Uh, thankfully, they're basically the same flight controller and they will work the same and they will both run beta flight. You can also direct solder your motor wires directly to the flight controller of the Naves 32 and that will fit in the frame. So almost done with this part and now we're left with a mounted power distribution board. So we're going to move our wires out of the way and look at the wires that we have left. So we have positive and negative coming off of our ESCs and we have corresponding positive and negative connections on our power distribution board. Now what we're going to have to do is just cut our ESC wires coming to our power distribution board down. Again, kind of like the motor wires before, we're just going to want a little bit of play, but enough to be able to move around the ESCs if we need to. And again, kind of like our ESC wires, it's just cutting, trimming them down to size, then exposing the ends of the wires uh, using either a wire stripper or what I prefer, a box cutter. Now, you, generally these ESCs come pre-tinned and you don't have to shorten them, but for a really clean look and a clean build, and again, the least resistance from wires being in the way from your battery to the ESC, the more power you can get to your ESC faster. Cool, so now that we have uh, our ESC wires cut and exposed, we can tin them with a little bit of flux. And using our soldering iron and solder, we will just add a little bit of solder to each tip. Like the soldering process before us, this one has a lot of prep, and prep time makes the final solder much easier to do. Now we can move on to soldering our power distribution board, and this process is only going to take a quick second, and we don't really need flux for this since we're using rosin core solder. Just make sure you have a hot enough soldering iron to do this. Now that we have everything prepped, we can move on to finally soldering our ESC wires to our power distribution board. Uh, again, you just have to apply heat with your soldering iron and it should just melt into place. On this power distribution board, things are a little bit tight, so be careful to not apply too much solder so it doesn't overflow into the neighboring joints because you do have interchanging positive and negative connections and if any two of those bridge, you're going to have a very bad day. So again, be very careful with this and if you have any questions about whether or not there's a problem, use a multimeter because that's the only way you'll know for sure. In this build, I don't think that was an issue, so I don't use one, but again, a multimeter is a very handy tool for diagnosing these kind of things. Uh, we lost a little bit of footage of me attaching the XT60 connector to the power distribution board, so 
It's pretty simple, just like the rest of our wires. And now what we're going to do is move on to our video transmitter and finding a place for our frame. Um, I found the best place for it is actually in the back. Um, and we're going to secure it in place with a little bit of mounting tape. This stuff is pretty much what it is, mounting tape. Um, so applying a little bit of it to the back of our video transmitter and then putting our video transmitter on the frame. It's now pretty well secure and you probably could fly with that, but we need to secure it down in place. So we're going to use a zip tie, put it around and cinch that in place and we have the final resting place for our video transmitter. Cool, and once we finish up with this, we can move on to our camera. This is our mini CCD camera from Surveil Zone. You can get them at Multiverse Mania, Multiverse Superstore. It's a pretty common camera now, and a lot of frames are using them. This frame generally uses a traditional, I don't know if it's traditional, but uses a 28mm board cam. I did not have that and I did not know I needed that. So make sure when you're putting this frame together you understand what camera you're going to use. Now what I like about the mini CCD camera is that we have the mounting bracket that it comes with and allows us to tilt it at different angles. Now on mine I did have to modify the bracket to fit into the frame. And to do that I drilled out two holes on either side. Uh, it was pretty simple, and if you look around, there are cameras out there that have brackets that will fit. So we're getting pretty far in our build process at this point. We need to figure out our video transmitter power. So, we need to route our video transmitter to our power distribution board. And this comes with its own wiring harness for the ET200 video transmitter. So what we're going to do is take our harness, find the two wires coming out of it. It has a 3S balance port coming off the back of it. And we're just going to shorten these wires up and cut them, strip them, and then we're going to put them in place using just a little bit of flux, a little bit of solder, and we just solder in place. The power distribution board conveniently has the 12 volt marks on it, so you know which ones you need to solder to. Cool, now that we have that in place, we can move on to figuring out our video wiring harness. So what we're going to do is cut it midway, taking our video wiring harness and trimming it down, and then we're going to run it underneath our power distribution board. So now we need to figure out the length we need everything at. So we're going to remove the insulator from our video wire harness. You can keep this on there if you want. And now we need to kind of guesstimate. And this is, this is a problem. You can leave a little bit of slack. I mean, it doesn't really hurt to have extra slack. And you can just kind of hide it somewhere. But I really like to try to have a tight looking build. So we're going to cut it in the middle. And then we're going to run our video wiring harness to the middle and trim it down. That way, when we solder them together, our crimes, quote unquote, will be hidden underneath the power distribution board. Unfortunately, I lost a little bit of footage to the following process, so we're just going to solder and heat shrink this together and run it to our camera. We'll be skipping ahead to running 5 volts off our power distribution board for our Fly Controller. So to do this, it's going to be a little tricky, and I'm going to slow down this process quite a bit so you can follow along. So yeah, so our flight controller has a 5 volt in, and we need to get 5 volts from our power distribution board to it. So using our servo lead, we will be able to splice it into our motor lead coming off of one of our ESCs, which will then power our flight controller, which then powers our receiver. So we need to solder on our servo lead to the 5 volt out on our power distribution board. This part is fairly quick and easy, and just like the 12 volt out for our VTX, it is basically the same process. So copy and repeat with blocks and add a little bit of solder. Cool! 
We now have our servo connector and what we need to do is remove the servo leads from it and splice them into our motor lead. So, just take our box cutter and we're going to up the tab and remove each one. Then we're going to insert them into our motor lead. And then we're going to have the ground out from our motor and we're just going to put a piece of heat shrink over it and cover it up. That way if we ever want to use it again in the future, we don't have it off and we can just unheat shrink it and put it back in. Uh, you could cut it, but again, I kind of like leaving it stock, quote unquote. Cool, so we're going to finish up with this and then we can move over to our flight controller. So finally, the moment of reckoning. We have our flight controller and what we need to do is to prep it is remove some of these wires. We have the ESC wires and then we have the receiver wires. Then what we're going to do is take our receiver wires out. We're going to remove all but the servo lead coming off of it with the ground and power. So going through this, we're just going to use our box cutter and there's little tabs and each of these tabs are very delicate. So be careful when you're removing the wires that you don't break them off. And eventually what you should be left with is a single servo connector coming off of our receiver wire. Cool. Cool, and so now we have to remove motors 5 and 6 from our ESCs. This will clean up the build quite a bit. And once we have that in, we can tuck our receiver wire underneath our board and attach it to our frame. Whew, we're getting towards the end of this build now, and we're just going to have a giant mess of wires hanging off the side. So the first thing we're going to need to do here is attach our receiver to our flight controller. So. We're going to connect this up with the CPPM out from our flight controller to the first signal lead on our receiver. Make sure to bridge number three and four signal wires on the receiver so you can use CPPM if you're using an FR Sky DR2. Now we need to figure out our wire harness. We have leads coming off of our flight controller and then we have the leads coming off of our ESCs. So we have motors one, two, three, and four and we have the ESCs marked uh, PWM1, PWM2, PWM3, and PWM4. Okay, so now we just have to connect each ESC and uh, lead from our flight controller together. PW1 to motor 1, PWM2 to motor 2, and PWM3 to motor 3, and PWM4 to motor 4. Motor 1 does have the 5 volt in and the uh, ground coming off of it, so just keep that in mind. Cool, so now we're going to bundle our wires together and uh, secure it with the zip tie. You could solder all these motor wires and shorten them, but I figured I would just save a little bit of time and do this this way. And then after this, we can configure our build before we finish it and fly it. Cool, so now that we're here, we can finally configure aircraft. So we're gonna plug it in with key Clean Flight open in the background. You can go and download Clean Flight from Google Chrome's App Store. And if it connects, that means you already have the latest version of Clean Flight on it and you don't have to worry about flashing it. But I'm assuming you don't, so we're going to disconnect from here. So we're going to go through the process of flashing both Beta Flight and Clean Flight. And we're on the start screen, so we're going to click Firmware Flasher tab. From here, we can load locally. And this is where you do beta flight, which we'll get to a little bit later on in the video. But first we're going to do clean flight. So you just click the drop down menu, highlight the latest version, and then you can click uh, load firmware online. Or yeah, load firmware online. And that should load up the firmware from the online database. And then you can flash the firmware. So this process is pretty simple. And both beta flight and clean flight are actually relatively the same in setup, so no matter which version you choose, the next process of actually setting it up will be the same. You should be able to connect to it, and uh, yeah, but before we're going to do that, we're going to flash beta flight. So we're going to disconnect, go back to firmware flasher, and then we're going to load firmware locally. Scroll down to wherever you find beta flight, and uh, open, and click flash firmware. 
So the beta flight hex that we just loaded, you can find that in the file description of the video. You can also <laughs> look up Boris B beta flight on Google and it'll take you to an RC group set with all the details. So now we can click connect uh, and we have our quad all ready with beta flight. Cool. So the next step is going to be configuration. So we're going to hit the configuration tab. Go in here and hit motor stop because I like my motors to stop when I arm it. <laughs> and stop when I disarm it. And then we cannot use one shot with these ESCs with beta flight. Uh, with regular clean flight, you can enable them. We're going to increase the maximum throttle to 1950. And then we're going to decrease the minimum throttle to 1100. So the motors will start from a lower throttle before we take off. And then down here, we're just going to double check and we're going to hit uh, RX PPM. And scroll up. And yeah, everything looks okay. And click save. Cool. Uh, yeah, right. So one thing I forgot was to hit 90 degrees on the uh, yaw adjustment. So we're going to go 90 degrees and we're going to hit save again. Cool, so now we're going to go to PID tuning. So we're going to use multi we one rewrite. Make sure that's selected. I'll be posting all the latest PIDs in the video description. So we're just going to up the roll rate because I like it to be really responsive and roll and snappy. Uh, so I generally do about anywhere from 60 to 80 uh, is good. And again, 60 to 80 on the pitch rate. And then uh, we're going to increase our yaw rate to one. And that should make it really snappy when we go to uh, yaw. Cool, we're gonna hit save. And on beta flight, you may need to disconnect and reconnect before you can continue. So we're gonna increase the RC Expo up and click save. Over to modes, and we're going to add an arm switch. So on aux one, we're going to add a range for that and save. So yeah, this is very handy. Um, I like using an arm switch versus uh, stick commands because if you crash or something, you can disarm it with a switch and you don't have to worry about bad things happening. We should be set up. At this point, you should be able to unplug it and uh, we should be able to move on to the next part of our build process, which is binding our receiver to our transmitter and then figuring out whether or not our motors are going the right way. So with our transmitter, in my case the Tyrannus, uh, using an FR Sky DR2, this may be different depending on your own transmitter and receiver, but for this we're going to use mine. So go to model setup. <coughs> scroll down to find it's towards the bottom of the menu and then you're going to click enter and you should hear your transmitter start sending out little pulses every second or so and you'll hear a beep 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 um, just very faintly so that means your transmitter is now in bind mode so we're going to go over to our receiver and our clock copter Okay, so now we're going to take our receiver and uh, kind of get it out and we're going to find the bind button. So there's a little button on the side that you can hold down and while holding it down, we can insert our battery. Doing this uh, simultaneously will hopefully put the receiver in bind mode and to tell if it's in bind mode, it should blink rapidly like you're seeing right now. So it is in bind mode and we should be bound. So now what we can do with our transmitter is exit bind mode and the receiver should still blink, which is completely normal, but we're good. So 
at this point, we can shut everything off and uh, go through the motions again. Everything's shut off, we're good to go, everything's bound, and we can just put our frame together. But before we do that, uh, we're going to check the motor direction. So I'm just going to exit out and... Uh, uh, one of the things I didn't cover were battery straps, so this would be a really good time to put on your battery straps. Plug in our battery, and that should be good to go. And it should beep, you should hear a couple beeps, you should have power to your flight controller, and you should be able to arm it with your switch. Cool. And cool, our motors work. So this is where you see which way your motors are going. And depending on which way your motors are going, you may have to reverse them. So on this build, we have two motors that we're going to have to reverse. Not a big deal, just motor uh, one and motor four. You could put the receiver in the front, uh, or as I did it on my setup, I put the receiver on the back of the frame. All that's left for this build is buttoning it up with our screw. And at this point, we're almost done. So all that's left is to put on the top front plate. And then once we get this top plate on the front, we will move on to hiding and securing our antennas. Cool, that's looking pretty good. So yeah, and securing our antennas, we're just gonna use the zip ties and put them underneath. Probably not the best position, but it's always worked for me. Okay, so now we can resolder our motor wires. So we're simply going to desolder two wires and then swap them. So pick any two of the three wires and swap them. I chose the outer edges and just desolder and resoldered. And it's a very simple process and should only take us a minute. Cool, so now we can finally move on to buttoning it up and maining it. We just need to secure our battery and put on our props. So I chose the Gemfan 5x45 bullnose propellers for this to run on a 4S 65C 103C battery. There should be a smoker of a setup, but with these 20 amp BSCs that have the heat sinks on them, I think it'll do just fine. Cool, so does it fly? Yeah, it flies. Uh, this is a bit nerve-wracking because this is the first time I actually test flew it, so you're seeing the results of the base tune. I'll be posting all the latest PID settings from my tuning sessions to this video description. Please use those versus the ones in the video. I will have the maiden of this out in about a week, and I'll have a compilation video of 7 days of flying out very soon. Hopefully you all found this helpful, and if you got to this point, thank you for watching. Comment, like, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff, and let me know if you want to see more of these videos in the future. And a special thanks to Emacs for sending me some equipment to test out and making this video possible. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate and send me a message.